got saved. Like, it was just, and I know that I wouldn't have gotten it unless God's grace would have been there for me. Because only the grace of God can reveal the truth of God. The Holy Spirit is the revealer of truth, the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge. We are not created to know about Him. It's not the knowledge about Him. We are created to know Him, and that word know, that word know is a word, it's, gosh, an example is that Adam knew Eve, and they came together. You knowing God is the same you thing. Knowing God is the same thing. together. It's actually intercourse. Intercourse. Where both come together through intimacy. It's just we got a twisted picture because of pornography, because of lust, because of how we've grown up. We're like, oh, that's gross. 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 No, no, no. It's not gross. It's oneness. This is sick. This is sick and disgusting. This whole thing is sick and disgusting. Jesus said, as I am in you, and you are in me, so we might be in them. Why? So the world might know that they sent me. The world might know that I was sent. The reason why we demonstrate this oneness and this intimacy and this totality of freedom and joy that comes from the Lord is so the world might know and be jealous for the God that we serve. Oh my gosh, it's so good. I'm reading an article from Christo La Verdad, Christ the Truth. This is about Unio Mystica. This is from September 15th, 2019. And I'm just going to read a portion, and I'll leave a link below. A few years back, in the Bible study group, we were presented with the Truth Project, I remember their eighth lesson was Unio Mystica, Am I Alone? Unio Mystica, as defined by presenter Mr. Tackett, a Calvinist, is the mystical union between God and man. I heard before the term used by mystics of the Catholic Church and also in New Age writings, but it was the first time I heard the word from an evangelical teacher. Now the term is becoming more and more common these days. This mystical union is not taught in the scriptures, but then where does it come from? We can find the origins of Unio Mystica teachings in Neoplatonism, Kabbalah, and Gnosticism. But then why are some Christian teachers pushing this doctrine in the church if it isn't biblical at all? Well, I believe it has been introduced into the church to indoctrinate or initiate Christians into Jewish mysticism or Kabbalah. The what is the Kabbalah? You've heard that the Kabbalah means the receiving, which is true. Uh, that's what it means, but that's a euphemism. Uh, what the Kabbalah actually is, is God and his wife, Israel, having sex. That's what the Kabbalah really is. My husband looked at me and goes, I can't, like, I, I can't believe she said that, but I'm telling you, yeah, you should have seen his face. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. And um, when God and his wife, Israel, have sex, the result of that is a birth. Worlds are born out of that union, communion, and those worlds are inhabited by living beings, all kinds of living beings, among them you, the Gentiles into Jewish mysticism or Kabbalah, the belief system of the soon coming Antichrist. I will elaborate more in a future post in the Antichrist series. Jesuit theologian Karl Rayner predicted the Christian of the future will be a mystic or will not exist at all. Quote, mysticism is derived from the Greek meaning I conceal in its derivative, mystikos, meaning an initiate. The verb has received a quite different meaning in the Greek language, where it is still used. The primary meaning it has are induct and initiate. Secondary meanings include introduce, 
Make someone aware of something. Train, familiarize, give first experience of something. Unquote from Wikipedia. Unio Mystica, found in Neoplatonism and Paganism. Henosis is the word for mystical oneness, or union, or unity, in classical Greek. In Platonism, and especially Neoplatonism, the goal of henosis is union with what is fundamental in reality, the one, the source, or monad. That's also from Wikipedia. Greek philosopher of 3rd century, Plotinus, founder of Neoplatonism, taught that the supreme being called the one could only be encountered, have union, in an irrational state of ecstasy or trance, achieved through certain progressive steps of mystical contemplation. Yoga, which means union, is all about the facilitation of this union. Unio Mystica is found in the Talmud and Kabbalah, Jewish mysticism. The Kabbalah is occult mystical teachings aimed at achieving union with God, their God, in order to obtain Godhood, same lie that the serpent offered in the garden. They also teach that knowledge or gnosis of the mysteries of the divine realm are essential for this union with God, but their deity who according to them gives them gnosis is the serpent. Teachings about the serpent are found in the Talmud and Kabbalah. Where the snake, where the where it states the snake is holy, Kabbalists are worshippers of the serpent of the garden in Genesis, which in the Bible is identified as Satan. The Zohar says, the holy serpent is the fountainhead root and essence for all God's sacred revelatory light. In Talmud and Kabbalah, it has been a constant theme referring to the mystic who journeys to the divine realm of the seven palaces of paradise to the throne of God. These ecstatic journeys to the other world appeared first in Babylonian sources. Masai Merkava, the first distinctly mystical movement in Jewish history, appeared in the late Hellenistic period after the end of the Second Temple period following the destruction of the Second Temple in 70 CE. I like to say A.D. It is a form of pre-Kabbalah Jewish mysticism that teaches both of the possibility of making a sublime journey to God. Merkava Hekelot mysticism began after the end of the Second Temple period following the destruction of the Second Temple in 70 CE when the physical cult ceased to function. Hecalot, which means palaces, derives from the divine abodes seen by the practitioner following a long period of ritual purification, self-mortification, and ecstatic prayer and meditation. In their visions, these mystics would enter into the celestial realms and journey through the seven stages of mystical ascent the seven heavens, and the seven throne rooms. The mantra-like repetitive nature of the liturgies recorded in many of these comp compositions seems meant to encourage further ascent. That's from Religion Wiki. Central to their practice is the Tree of Life, which, is the, mystic, which the mystic ascended symbolically through meditation. They have seven lower paths or gates that also correspond to the chakras taught in yoga and three higher paths or mystical steps to achieve union with the One divine. One of the great Svat rituals was the rite, the cult, shall I say, of the Shekhinah and the cult of the divine marriage. Now people don't really think about this when they go to temple in America and rise at the end of a certain hymn and bow and sing, Come, O Bride, Come, O Bride. But in fact, the Tzvat Kabbalists viewed the Friday night service and meal as a wedding feast when the divine parts of God above unified with the earthly feminine aspect of God in the world, the Shekhinah, and they had sexual union on Friday night. And this has survived into general Jewish practice to this Unio Mystica, or mystical union with God, is found in Gnosticism. According to Masonic historian Albert Pike, Gnosticism was an offshoot of Kabbalism. 
On page 626 of Morals and Dogma, the most esteemed work of Freemasonry, Pike states, The Kabbalah is the key of the occult sciences, and the Gnostics were born of the Kabbalists. Unquote. Page 249, The New World Order by Gary Kaw. Bridal mysticism promoted by Catholics, New Apostolic Reformation, IHOP, etc., Latter Rain Movement, is a Gnostic doctrine. Teresa described the soul's intense desire for God in the language of erotic passion. In this, she belongs to a long tradition of mystical experience that is known as bridal mysticism. The symbolism of bridal mysticism is found already in early Gnostic forms of Christianity, where the central sacrament is called the bridal chamber, where the feminine soul of the Gnostic unites with the masculine spirit and is in this way spiritualized, that is, liberated from the limitations of mundane existence. Related symbolism is found as well in the writings of the early Christian mystic Origen and the Neoplatonic mystic Plotinus. These three forms of mysticism are related and serve as the foundation for the history of mysticism in Christianity. ARAS, Archive for Research in Archetypical Archetypal Symbolism. The bridal chamber was the mystical where the mystical union occurs is also described in the Gnostic Gospel of Philip as the means to attain Christhood and is also found in the Gnostic Gospel of Thomas. Gnostic Jews tried to infiltrate the early church and were considered heretics by the apostles. The Gnostics valued what they experienced and what they learned from angels over Holy Scripture. This is the main reason Apostle Paul warned against warned about angels in Colossians 2.18, in Galatians 1.8, in 2 Corinthians 11.14. The Nicolaitans were also a Gnostic sect. Jesus said about them, quote, thus, you must, thus you also have those who hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Unquote. Revelation 2, 6, 14 through 15. Union Mystica is also found in Catholicism. I will leave a link for this article below. There's a book on, uh, the, on the Kabbalah and the Zohar. It's called Nine and a Half Mystics. And this guy is describing this Hebrew mystic, this Jewish mystic that he knows, and he's describing what he's learning about the Zohar and Kabbalah. And he says, Wisdom, the giving element, is thus labeled masculine and given the name Father. Its opposite on the left side is understanding and is considered feminine because it is a receiver and it is called mother. Okay? That's what you're seeing there, the father and the mother, the male and the female. The next to last sephira, which is the circles here, which receives the seed is called both kingdom and Shekinah, the feminine presence of God. The Hebrew word sivug, which means coupling, is a Hebrew term which can be applied to the sex act as well as to the unifications of the sephiroth, joining them all together. Sivug is the goal of all the movements of the Sephiroth in the upper world. To be sure, the acts of unification are preceded in that world, as in this, by a dialectic of tensions between the polarities, yin and yang, male and female, white and black, uh, good and evil, which evoke the flow of life-giving seed and prepare the receiver, uh, but unification represents the fulfillment of the plan. What the Zohar is teaching there is that grace, life, or joy cannot flow through the inner worlds and permeate lower or external worlds until the proper couplings take place. And the all-important principle that what happens above depends upon what happens below. Gobbledygook. Jesus goes to hell. Run. There's just one name that can keep you out of hell, and it's the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus.